like I'm kind of channeling Sarah from Labyrinth with this outfit, which makes sense because she's a reader and I'm a reader and we both like to escape from reality. Speaking of escaping from reality, I'm gonna do something that I basically don't ever really do. I am going to do a recap of the art books that I read in 2023. Even though I love to read, I generally don't leave like a lot of reviews and I don't generally participate too much in Goodreads. Back when I was more involved in like the indie comic scene, that was really important to me because it could help me support fellow indie creators. But it's just one of those things that I don't super do. And I watch a lot of book reviewers and I can see why I don't do it because uh, people don't like it when you say you don't like their particular fave. So this isn't all inclusive. I'm actually missing one and I just finished another that I decided not to include in this because I haven't even recorded the review of it. And there's also one that I read before I started the review. These are in chronological order. Most of these have been reviewed in full uh, as part of the easily influenced video that they're attached to or they're done in like a set of three book reviews. So if you're looking for a more in-depth review of what I've read or a particular book, it may already be up in the Easily Influenced playlist. And uh, I have no notes because for all of their real reviews, I had like 30 minutes worth of notes. So a lot of this is just kind of vibes and general feelings. So we're gonna start out with Celestial Zodiac Painting. I found this one at Five Below. So Five Below has a repackaging deal. You'll actually see a lot of books that are sold in an abridged format at Five Below that um, they've been changed in some way from like their normal publication. So my critique of the Five Below version, and this was put out by Rock Point, does not reflect how the actual full version of the book might be. I have seen it like online, but I have never had a chance to flip through it. If you see this at Five Below and you're looking for like watercolor inspiration, you're looking for pretty pictures, this could be fine, but this is really more about the zodiac signs than it is about actually, you know, painting them, even though painting is in big letters. And I kind of wanted to give a couple of Five Below art books a try because I recognize that this might be, I like how I'm flipping it to show and I'm not showing anything. This might be the more accessible way to get these books. Um, my own local library does not have a particularly good or big or updated watercolor section. And although I have filled out request forms, sometimes it happens, sometimes it don't, it don't. So like, if there is a book you want to see and you cannot afford it or you don't wanna buy it, filling out a library request form and then checking it out of your local library is a wonderful way to do that. And then to ensure that maybe other people can have access to it. My library is just so beleaguered with hurricane problems that that it, maybe that's not highest on their priority and that's fine. But I, I don't have access to these kind of books in my local library because I would be just checking them out rather than buying all of them. So I found this one to be kind of a miss. Uh, every time I go to Five Below, I kind of look to see if there are any promising how-to books. Um, haven't seen too many of them since because I don't really want to do like a bad faith review. And a lot of them seem to be like tangentially about art despite having an art topic on the cover. And then it's about like yoga or it's about Reiki or it's about like something completely different because they're trying to make it appealing to the demographic that typically goes to Five Below. So I have not had like the best experiences with Five Below art books. So next is No Fail Watercolor by Macachino. I think this is a great watercolor project book. It's not necessarily going to teach you how to watercolor, but if you're already somewhat familiar with how to use watercolor and basic techniques and you already have some materials, this is full of some great projects to help you become a little bit more comfortable with watercolor. My complaint, this is a page street book. So it's got kind of the same problem that a lot of the page street books have where the demonstration images are just not big enough. It tends to be kind of text heavy. That's why I say if you're already kind of familiar with watercolor, 
This book might be great. If you're a fan of her YouTube page, this might be a good companion for that because she probably demonstrates a lot of what is talked about in this book over on the YouTube. So this could be great if you're just looking for a little more explanation, if you're looking for a little bit more information. Next is Christy Rice's How to Make Art for Joy's Sake, Free Spirited Watercolor. And I talked about this one a lot more in my Easily Influenced by Christy Rice review. I really like this book. It's a very attractive book. I've opted for the spiral binding, which is a little more expensive, but it makes the book a little more accessible as well. It is beautiful. Well laid out, full color pages, interesting projects, more step-by-step -step than some of the other art books. This is the how-to watercolor book that you leave out on your coffee table if you want your friends who are coming over to visit to ask you if you've gotten into watercolor, you know, or if you're looking to entice a friend or family member into picking up watercolor. All in all, I enjoyed this book. Um, it does not include an index, so if you're looking for something really specific, that's kind of a downside, but in general, this is a great book. And I reviewed this book before I started tabbing things that I wanted to revisit. So the fact that, and the Macchino book, the fact that it doesn't have any tabs is absolutely not indicative of how much I did or didn't like the book and whether or not there were aspects of it that I wanted to revisit. She also has a YouTube channel. So if you're looking for more, like if you want some motion demonstrations to some of the things talked about in the book, her YouTube channel seems like it's a pretty great place for that. She also talked about what materials in specifics that she uses. So if you're looking for some art supply inspiration, or if you're looking to try something new, or you're just starting out and you're not super familiar with supplies, she does walk you through that. I would say this book is a better fit for an intermediate painter than for a beginner painter, which a lot of these books feel like they're written for beginner painters. So I'm really glad that there was one that kind of assumes you already know some watercolor and you might just be looking for something new or a little bit different. Next is Jenna Rainey's Everyday Watercolor. This one, you see this one like everywhere. You see it at like most of the bookstores, my library actually doesn't have this one. That was kind of surprising because this is so ubiquitous. I tried reading this on Kindle first and that's how I realized that I don't like reading how-to art books on Kindle. So that's where I kind of made the shift to actually purchasing the books. I also opted for spiral binding that makes it much easier to use this book. That said, I did not like Everyday Watercolor. I felt like she skipped a lot of gaps. There's a, this is more drawing heavy than you would expect. Also the cover art, she never shows you how to do that. She never explains her process for loose watercolor florals and that's why I bought the book. So I found it really very disappointing. Uh, like I mentioned a second ago, it's very drawing heavy, but it doesn't come with any templates. And I do, I am starting to lean into the thought that if a book is gonna be drawing heavy, templates are very helpful for the folks who wanna paint and they are not necessarily confident in their drawing. And I just felt like it was kind of basic and overly wordy. It didn't have enough pictures. And um, after I did the Easily Influenced by Jenna Rainey premiere on YouTube, there were a lot of people who gave similar feedback that they'd had similar experiences with this book. So if this book is for you, that is wonderful. I would heavily recommend finding an in the wild copy, Barnes and Noble, uh, Michaels, maybe McKay's, you know, and flipping through it before you buy it to see if this book is for you. Because if I weren't doing a series on influential artists, and if I could have flipped through this book, I probably would not have bought it. And if I could have borrowed it from my library, I would have done that for the series. So this is one that I think a lot of people think they need because Jenna Rainey's art is beautiful, but this one is one you can skip. That said, Jeannie Dixon's Hello Watercolor is great. I highly recommend it. I think it's great for a beginner. I think it's great for a more intermediate artist. It, it's a really wonderful resource. She has big, beautiful pictures. She explains things very well. She gives terminology and vocabulary to things that you might not have quite the right words for yet. And that gives us points that we can actually talk about and discuss. I talked about this book in more depth in the Jeannie Dixon review. 
but in general, I really liked it. Her projects are really fun. They, um, some of them are more simple, some of them are more complicated, but she includes templates in the back of her book for my friends who maybe are less confident about drawing or maybe they don't feel like drawing that day. Um, and she also has a index. So if you're looking for something specific, Hello Watercolor, I highly recommend it. I really like it. When I was putting together a gift guide that I decided not to release, this book was actually on that gift guide. I think it's really good um, and I highly recommend it. Now, if you're the kind of person who can't learn from books and you need video, she does have a YouTube channel. It's not as fully fleshed out as some of the other books that we've talked about. Um, I think she's a little bit more prolific on Instagram and on Facebook. So if you need to see those video demonstrations to explain certain topics for you, those are also a great addition to this book. Next is Omar Wynn's Go With The Flow painting. This is published by Corey. It is a fairly thin book. Corey is an imprint of Quattro. And something that I've noticed about Quattro is that they take, they contact artists who have some existing audience, some existing influence and get them to do books. And on the one hand, I think that's great because that can bring in a lot of really fresh ideas and it can really change up how we think about approaching watercolor. The downside is these books tend to be published on a very short timeline, which means you may not get as many demonstrator photos as you might like. You may not get large hero images. Some of the things may not be as, as well explained as others. So my, I like this book, but I struggle to recommend it because it's a beautiful book. And I think if you're an intermediate painter, it may encourage you to get out of your comfort zone somewhat. And I think that's wonderful. The downside to this book is she does, she leaves a lot not explained. She doesn't talk about what size paper she's working on or what brands of paper or what types of paper she's working on. She doesn't talk about what size she's painting at to give you a sense of scale because for a lot of these loose things, it's much easier to do them bigger and use more of your arm to replicate the shape than it is to do them tiny. So the scale in this instance makes a difference. She also doesn't explain if she's done practice drawings to kind of warm up and achieve that one perfect one and done. She doesn't explain if she does underdrawings or thumbnails, any of that process that would be really helpful in understanding how to loosen up your watercolor and be more playful and more sketchy in your watercolor, she doesn't really do. And I think those are the artists, the ones who like myself tend to over render, tend to overthink, tend to be too tight. They're the ones who would benefit and be interested in this book. And she doesn't really explain her process. So if you like beautiful art and you're a fan of Omar Wynn's work already, this book, think of it kind of like an art book, um, but it doesn't explain the things I felt like I wanted explained well enough. Um, and it is, it is a project book. So it is a, it's full of these projects that you can paint along with, which is wonderful. But I think there's a lot of assuming you already have technical ability that you might not have. And unlike Hello Watercolor, it doesn't come with templates. So this one is a harder one to recommend. I think if you're already very confident in art, this could be a good addition. But if you are looking to learn watercolor, if you're struggling with watercolor, this book is not really a good fit for you. So of course, I had to review a couple of books by Jane Davenport. She's kind of like the OG influential artist. We have Beautiful Faces and fabulous figures. And if you are a fan of Jane Davenport's art and you want to want a book of her art, these are a good option for that. If you are looking to draw Jane's way and you are not necessarily looking to draw figure a variety of body types or variety of facial types or variety of facial expressions or any facial expressions other than one or two, these books are fine too. If you are interested in learning how to draw whimsical, playful figures and faces though, these books leave a lot, a lot, a lot of gaps that make them very hard to recommend, especially because I just finished uh, Watercolor Devo's Amaryllis's 
whim, uh, expressive little faces. And I have not recorded the review for that one yet, but I think that is a much better fit if you're interested in whimsical faces than beautiful faces is here. As for fabulous figures, I, I had some pretty severe issues with this book. And um, unless you are a major fan of Jane Davenport's art, I really cannot recommend either of them. And I talk about why in my Easily Influenced by Jane Davenport, which at the time of recording this year reading recap, I have not released yet. So I do not have it here, but uh, they got misplaced somewhere and I can't find it. Josie Lewis has a, now I can't remember the name. So I'm going to put up an Amazon thing right here because ADHD, no script. And generally I need like a physical reminder so I can remember what I was thinking about it. Anyway, her, her book on color is both great and not challenging for me as a watercolor artist to recommend. She does a lot with collage. So if you're interested in collage, that book could be a really good option for you. Um, she didn't do as much with the puffy acrylic as I'd kind of hope, because that's something I really like from her. And um, just learning more about that process would have been really cool. And while she does talk about watercolor, it is she and I think about watercolor very differently. Something I found surprising is even though the book is about color, she doesn't really go into detail about how she specifically thinks about color, which is actually why I bought the book. Um, she gives us some anecdotes like when she was a girl getting in trouble with her very sweet grandma for reorganizing all of her embroidery thread, but she doesn't even tell us how she did it or what her thought process was. I mean, it's a charming story that I can relate to, but I don't, I didn't learn anything more about color. That said, she has these essays interspersed through the book. They're a very, essay is maybe not the right word. They're really, um, almost like little letters to us, something like that. They're little short stories. They're like things she's thinking about. And that's what I actually really liked about her book on color. I really enjoyed her essays on art and how her brain connects the dots. You can tell that she has a background in art and you can tell that she has formal art education because the way she connects the dots and the way she connects different art forms, you can tell she's been exposed to a lot of art forms and you can tell she's been challenged to think critically and analytically about different art forms. And I really liked that part of the book. And if the book had been nothing but hero images of her art and essays, I think it would have needed to be marketed differently because it didn't quite hit the marketing mark I felt I was being marketed to. But if I knew it was a book of her essays and her art, I probably would have bought it, right? That's gonna be like, the thing about a lot of these art books is a lot of them are marketed as like, I'm going to teach even a very basic, basic novice beginner who's never picked up a brush or a pencil how to do the thing. And none of them are able to do that because that is a really hard nail to hit on the head. And um, I'm going to try to find an example. I know Macchino's No Fail Watercolor kind of does that. So let me find another. Hello, Watercolor says creative techniques and inspiring projects for the beginning artist. I do feel like she, she does a pretty good job with that. Everyday Watercolor, learn to paint watercolor in 30 days. It's perfect for creative people who have always dreamed of picking up a brush. I don't really feel like for me that hit the mark with this one. Art for joy, sake promises, forget rules, forget right, remember joy. I get what she's trying to put down with that one. Um, and, and honestly, promising big nebulous things like happiness, joy, fulfillment. But those are impossible to fulfill promises, right? So maybe it's unfair of me to hold her to that standard. And then with No Fail Watercolor, it calls it the ultimate beginner's guide to painting with confidence. And I just don't feel like it was able to white hit that for an absolute beginner, right? I would not, this is not thick enough to be the ultimate beginner's painting guide, right? So a lot of these books, their cover tagline makes promises that are already like really challenging to meet or because they want to hit those beginner artists who um, like, look, let's, let's remember ourselves back in time, whether it's yesterday, five minutes ago or 10 years ago. 
when we were all starting with watercolor, I think a lot of us were looking for that secret sauce book and we were willing to pick or learning how to draw. And we would pick up any book that promised that because we were ever hopeful. And I still fall into that with the loose watercolor florals. So I'm pointing this out because I can't just go to my store and my library and flip through these books and see if I like them. I, they're, my Barnes and Noble doesn't carry them. My Michaels generally, I was, I am surprised when my Michaels carries any art books at this point, besides the ones aimed at very young children. Um, my library doesn't have these books. So if I want to see if I like these books, I have to review, read the reviews on Amazon, which are almost always glowing. Um, or I have to, and, or I have to take, take a risk and purchase the book. So um, I just want publishers and artists, I guess, to exercise some caution that not everybody can flip through and see if it's a good fit. And maybe that's a big ask. So maybe I'm asking you guys to exercise caution. And then finally, from what I, not quite finally, because I did also read Sarah Cray's floral workbook. Um, but I'm going to clap because that's so project dependent. I'm not going to include that with this because there really wasn't a whole lot of reading. Um, the last book that I read was Irit Landgraf's Watercolor Freedom, Painting Techniques to Unleash Creative Joy and Intuition. And this is a self-published book published through KDP. It looks kind of like KDP to me as someone who has published through KDP. Um, and with that, it has some of the KDP problems of the paper stock is a little too thin. The colors are not as vibrant as you would like them to be. Those are honestly relatively minor problems. And I don't think that's a reason to skip out on a self-published book, especially with these how-to books, because it opens up the door to, we're not just talking about the most popular artists who have kind of been homogenized. We're talking about people who have built up an audience enough that they think they can sell a book and I'm in that same category so I'm talking about myself here and they have something they think is unique hopefully compared to what is available in the rest of the market but they may not have the massive audience required to attract one of those publishers or they may be doing something a little bit more niche that hasn't quite caught on yet so I am definitely open to self-published watercolor and art how-to books. Uh, gee, some of my favorite books on making comics have been self-published using Kickstarter. So sometimes there just isn't enough mass appeal to justify a publisher picking something up, but that doesn't mean it's not going to have a place in your library. So with this book, I felt like, first of all, the design of the book is really pretty. A lot of her shots, like her hero images are very pretty. I appreciate that she includes a lot of her neutrals. That said, I felt like she didn't explain her thought process enough. We have pages and pages and pages and pages of, and like 20 pages of swatches, but we don't get to see her sketchbook. We don't get to see her development process very often. We don't really get to understand how she thinks about art what is she processing? What is the lens? The most we get with her is she has mentioned that she doesn't like to work from photos or from live reference. She felt like that was the only two options presented to her at the time, which had me very confused because uh, imagination has always been on the table. So she prefers to like internalize it and then paint from memory, which is fine. That is definitely an option. You are definitely going to get those really strong flavors those like pops of vivid memory in your work. And if that's the kind of work you want to do, and that can often be very helpful for storytelling and nostalgia storytelling, there is nothing wrong with that. But she didn't really explain that process enough. She, <laughs> she's guilty as most of these artists are of not citing their sources. They don't ever mention who has inspired them. They don't give credit to the heroes that influence their work. They don't talk about the things that they enjoyed and sources of inspiration. And honestly, working with people who are newer to art, giving them permission to work from the things that they love is really important. I like 
dolls. I like miniatures. I like fairy tales. I like mushrooms. I like being outside. I like animals. Those things inspire my work. My work is set in Southeast Louisiana because I was heavily inspired by Hayao Miyazaki, whose big deal thing was to tell these very Japanese stories and to make it really feel like a place, to pick a specific place and set it there. And I wanted to do that with Louisiana stories. So that's me explaining some of my inspiration so that maybe if you're inspired by newts and fire trucks and Louisiana irises and cooking with your grandma, you will figure out a way to make a gestalt of that and create art that is from you and your heart. And that is the number one thing all of these books struggle with is taught. They can show you how to use their inspiration. They can show you how to draw like they draw. They can show you how to paint like they paint, but they're not willing to share their thought process. Most of minus Josie, most of them are not willing to get introspective about art in a really nerdy art way. And I feel like a lot of this is why these are all aimed at beginner artists because a beginner artist doesn't know to ask for these things. An intermediate artist who has experienced more of the world, who has read more art books, particularly if you've read like Japanese manga, because side notes, that is an extremely nerdy thing to say, Becca. They talk about their thought process. They talk about going on trips and collecting reference and working with their editors. And I want that from these books too. So that might be a big bias of mine, but basically if you are looking to get inside any of these artists heads if you're looking to understand how they think if you're looking to understand how they take the world they see around them and reprocess it on the page none of these books are going to be able to do that some of these books will teach you how to watercolor which is fantastic some of these books will teach you how to think a little bit more creatively or try something new or leave your comfort zone which is also fantastic and valid some of these books will share their own art, their favorite art, the art that they are proud of. Some of these books will show you that art and then never talk about how to learn how to do that. This one being very guilty of that. Some of these books will show you beautiful art and then teach you how to do it. Some of these art books will inspire you to go a little bit more mixed media with what you're using, like by picking up dip pins and adding a cute ink outline. Um, some of these books will have a lot of really pretty art in it and not be able to explain figure drawing well enough that I feel like someone else could confidently learn how to figure draw from this book. Some of these books will have a beautiful face. It's the same face over and over and over and over again. And that's really pretty to look at but you're not gonna learn how to draw faces and expression from that. And some of these books will encourage you to get really mixed media with it in unusual and exciting ways, but won't do a very good job of showing you the behind the scenes other than the color mixing thought process that goes into this beautiful, vibrant, abstract art. So I have read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plus two, I have read 12 art books and I started this project in like October. I, I love to read. Reading is like one of my big joys in life. So um, that was one for every month of the year almost because we didn't talk about Sarah Cray's floral workbook and we did not talk about Amaryllis's slash watercolor devos expressive little faces, which I really liked. And I hope you guys will keep an eye out for my Easily Influenced by Sarah Cray video, where I will talk about that workbook in depth and my Easily Influenced by Watercolor Devo, where I'm going to talk about expressive little faces, expressive little animals, which I haven't read yet, and her collaboration with Peerless Watercolors. Honestly, I learned something from most of these books. If you guys see tabs, these are projects that I want to revisit. This one, is a great book. It should have more tabs. Some of them just really didn't do it for me. Some of them I read before I started tabbing things and some of them really kind of seem to miss the mark. So I hope I, well, first off, I will have all of these books listed out for you guys down in the description below. If you saw something that you liked and you want to check it out, for the videos where the full review is released, and those also include flip-throughs, because I'm not going to do flip-throughs in this one, um, 
I will link those for you guys as well. If there are any watercolor books that you guys, watercolor books that are either particularly good or by art influencers slash influential artists that you guys would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments. Although I am working on, I have a bunch. I picked up so many on Black Friday. So um, I probably am working on it, but I would still love to hear you guys' suggestions. You guys should also keep in mind that my basis of excellence is Japanese and Chinese art books and how full of photos those are and how full of step-by-step -step they are and how well they can explain things even to a non-native speaker. So that's kind of like my bar that I'm hoping books will start, Western books will start to hit. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for talking about art books with me. If you guys want to check out my art and my books, you can read my comics, 7 inch Kara at 7 inchcarecom You can check out my art on Instagram. Have any of you guys found like a better art sharing site? It used to be on ArtStation and they are just not strict enough about AI art for my taste. And I know that Meta is like combing and collating our art and using it for generative AI. So I'm not super comfortable about posting on Instagram anymore, but our options are sure getting slim. Speaking of though, I do have a personal website at natosoup.com and you can also check out my shop where I have art prints and stickers and books and art kits at natosoup.com slash shop. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Part of me reading and thinking critically about all these books is because I am going to be working on my own watercolor book that focuses on drawing and painting people and characters. So I'm doing a little bit of market research here and hopefully I can address some of the issues that I'm bringing up with some of these books because I'm seeing some niches that need to be filled and that could be me y'all. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope to see you guys again soon. If you liked a book I didn't like, let me know polite you know let's be cool let's be respectful here let me know in the comments below if you dislike a book i liked do the same thing and if we have if we're on the same wavelength let me know that as well i'll see you guys again really soon with another maybe hopefully artist chant maybe an art supply review maybe a tutorial i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i hope to see you guys again soon bye guys